So one of many tools that can help us be real proactive is called the IP SLA tool. That, by the way, this service level agreement tool has been renamed so many times in Cisco operating systems. It used to be called the real-time responder, then it got named the service assurance agent, and now for the last few years it's been at the IP SLA name. What a proactive network manager can do is they can set up synthetic traffic to be generated from an IPSLA source device to an IPSLA responder. The responder can respond back, literally backing out the processing time for the IPSLA process itself, and you can get amazing statistics. Maybe the network administrator is concerned about the bandwidth that's on a key link. Maybe they're concerned about their voice over IP traffic on that link, and they want to make sure they head off any problems due to variations in delay called jitter. Well, sure enough, the network administrator can set up a jitter test to run and they can be alerted when things start to go bad instead of waiting for phone calls from users that are upset about their voice over IP performance. Let me show you how easy it is to set up one of these tests. So the first thing for me to do is go over to R2 and make sure it's set up as an IP SLA responder. I'll do the IP SLA responder command. There we go. The verification show IP SLA responder. And we can verify that the IP SLA responder is enabled. You don't have to have an IP SLA responder device. You could literally just utilize any IP device, but you get a lot more robust testing capabilities when you have a Cisco router acting as a responder. Now on R1, we'll set up our IP SLA testing. I'll say IP SLA 1 to create this particular test, and we'll do a UDP jitter test. Use context sensitive help to fill out this information. We have a destination for the test of 10.10.10.2, a port number of let's do 49152 for our traffic. What codec do we want to simulate with this synthetic traffic? I'll do G711. Let's see, we'll do G.711A law. And that's enough. You could get more sophisticated adding more parameters to your particular test traffic. Like maybe even uh, in a moment, I'll set the type of service marking for this particular traffic. Okay, so what's next? Well, how often is this test going to run? So we'll set a frequency for the generation of this synthetic traffic. Notice the default is 60. I'll make it real aggressive. Now this is unrealistic for real life. And in fact, I just tried to set it to five seconds and it says, no, you can't even do that because that would be running it too frequently for us to adequately do the test. Okay, we'll stick with the frequency of how about 75 seconds or 76 seconds, great. Uh, we can add additional parameters here, like who is the owner of this particular test. We can give this test a particular tag value so we can pull this information easily into simple network management protocol. Great stuff. And as I alluded to earlier, we can set a type of service for these synthetic packets. Maybe I want to simulate expedited forwarding traffic, so I set the toss setting to 184 in decimal, that dif differentiated services value. Okay, now what we do, once we have the test set up with the parameters that we're interested in, now what we do is set up a schedule, IP SLA, and we will do the schedule keyword, and I'm thinking we need to specify our particular IP SLA number that we set up of one, and then we're going to say, all right, when should we start it? How about right now? And what should be the life of this particular test? How about forever? So we go in and we schedule our IP SLA test. What I'm going to do right now is pause the video. After a minute or two, we'll come back, we'll know that it has run, and we'll see the results. I'll be right back. All right, thanks to the magic of video, we are back and some time has elapsed. Let's do show IP SLA and we can say statistics 
for our particular IP SLA entry number, which was one. And look at this. So the latest operation start time is listed here. And we see that it returned a code of OK. And for jitter, we have done a number of jitter samples. And we can see the average source to destination jitter is 12 milliseconds. And we can see the average destination to source jitter is 12 milliseconds. This is such incredibly valuable information. Keep in mind, this could be run periodically. This could be harvested from this machine, this important data, by simple network management protocol tools, and we can be real proactive about the quality of voice over IP phone calls on this particular circuit. Well, Steve, thank you so much for this opportunity to present in this Halloween-themed NuggetCast episode. Thanks again. And of course, as always, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.